Hello, welcome to this quick clip having a look at how you might want to use mind mapping skills to summarize um, your notes that you take for a topic in A-level chemistry. Um, I'm going to use the basic organic chemistry topic as an example. So a mind map is simply a way of condensing your notes that you've made in class and your independent study notes into a easy to use format which minimizes the amount of text that you have to read. So it's designed to be a revision tool so you can look at the topic at a glance and by constructing it, it helps your brain to make the connections between the key parts of the content. So it doesn't really matter what type of layout you use. I'm going to use this layout. That's the type of layout I happen to use when I was studying A-level chemistry. But there's plenty of different ways in which you may wish to do this. So if you get hold of your notes on basic organic chemistry, they might be notes you took in class combined with your independent study. And you also need to have them next to the independent study learning objectives so you can cross-reference. The learning objectives tell you the content that's required by the specification. So this might be your notes, for example, and the um, independent study learning objectives are there. So the learning objectives can be used as a guide. You're aiming to minimize the amount of writing so that's condensing your IS and class notes and put them into the mind map. So for, as an example, I'm going to take the, um, uh, the second one, 4.1.1b, um, because there's lots of writing in that particular learning objective. And that can be sort of simplified into a few basic things. So look, having a look at it, you've got the general formula, you've got homologous series, you've got structural formula, you've got displayed formula, etc. And also skeletal formula. So I'm going to take that section of the notes and go through one possible approach. This isn't the only way you could do it. It's really important that when you do a mind map, you do it in such a way that suits you. So in a way, it's almost like your own creation rather than copying what I'm telling you to do. So the learning objectives from the IAS task guide what content to include and the notes and independent study tasks together decide what to put into the mind map. So I'm going to take this template and I'm going to call it basic organic chemistry and I'm going to look at one particular section of it, the part that says what a general formula is. And I can see from the notes that I've got alkanes, I've got alkenes. I might want to include alcohols, I might not. But one thing I do know is that quite often people don't realize that cycloalkanes and alkenes actually happen to have the same general formula. So you might not have cycloalkanes in your IS, for example, but once you've had the lesson and the teaching, you might then realize that they share the same general formula, so that can be added in. So an homologous series is a family of compounds with similar properties. But in the IS notes, I've put that the um, successive members differ by the addition of a CH2 group. Now, this is something that quite often people miss out. So if you spot an example like this, add it into your mind map. So a functional group is an atom or group of atoms responsible for chemical properties. And you might want to put some examples in just to flesh it out a little bit. Just one or two is the maximum. Don't go to, uh, completely to town on this. So the next thing is straight chain branched and non-aromatic rings. That is aliphatic compounds. And then alicyclic has a crossover between um, aliphatic, doesn't it? So non-aromatic rings would be alicyclic compounds. So there's a note to self. Alicyclic compounds are examples of aliphatic compounds. So sometimes people don't always realize that they, they kind of share a definition there. So if something occurs to you, put it in. It's a piece of thought you came up with and therefore you're more likely to remember it. I'm going to create some space because now I think maybe put some examples in of what a branched 
compound looks like, what a straight chain compound looks like, what an allocyclic compound looks like, and what an aromatic compound looks like. Now, as I'm doing this, things are occurring to me. So, for example, that one might be called butane. So just by putting butane and C4H10 in, you can see the link straight away between the displayed formula and the molecular formula. This next one here is 2-methylhexane. I've had to do a little bit of thinking because I've got to process the fact that the longest carbon chain goes around a corner. And then what occurs to me is, oh yeah, there's locant numbers coming up. And then as I do that, I might remember, oh yeah, I can do a skeletal formula for this as well. So I could label that as a th the skeletal formula. And then I could also remember that the original one I put down is called the displayed formula. So you might notice what I'm doing is I'm just putting down things as they occur to me. I'm not writing big, long pieces of definitions. I'm using pictures and maybe one or two words to illustrate what I'm trying to put down. So it's all in one place and it's visually user friendly. So I'm going to stop at this point. All I've tried to illustrate is how what might be in four or five pages of your notes can then be condensed into pictures and thoughts on one page. Obviously, more can be added. This isn't complete. There's obviously a gap over here, which I've left on purpose. So now go and have a go yourself. Try it out and see if it works for you. And then maybe once you've done it, you can try an exam question to see if it helps your understanding and your recall. Okay, thanks for listening. Until next time, see you soon.